Hi there, welcome to the new video. Today we'll be going through this interesting paper which is titled as Automatic Video Creation from a Web Page. This paper is from Google Research and Georgia Institute of Technology. And this came out a couple of months ago, this year itself. So let's start with the abstract. Creating marketing videos from scratch can be challenging, especially when designing multiple platforms with different viewing criteria. So this is pretty true because if you're trying to generate marketing videos for any product, let's say, then you have to be really crisp in terms of defining its features and the functionality of the product, which is a pretty creative process. And later, if you plan to post those videos on social media platforms, then you might come across multiple constraints in terms of aspect ratio or maybe time duration that the platform introduces. So yeah, designing such videos for different platforms becomes challenging because of the creativity involved. So the researchers propose a technique called URL to video. It's an automatic approach that converts a web page into a short video given some temporal and visual constraints. URL to video also captures the quality material design style extracted from the web page, including the fonts, colors, and layouts. Okay, so let's see this example. So a web page or essentially a URL is given as an input to the function URL to video. It extracts the design in the temporal fashion to how it's already arranged in the actual web page. So if you see, if you go from top to bottom, you see a logo with some orange background, then you see multiple aspects of the product in some card fashion. So this is exactly what the system extracts as you propagate in time. And it assigns a certain time duration for all of these components. Then based on the output criteria, if you want a landscape or a portrait mode, you arrange them in that order by keeping the style, color scheme and the font similar to what the original web page has and stitch the sequence of shots in a nice video format. So yeah, this is the very high level view of how URL to video works. So once you have this video created by the system, users can examine the design components and modify constraints through our user interface to define the components. Okay, so they have some kind of a user interface that is available to the creator who is trying to create the video, wherein he can go on and edit some of the components and information that were generated automatically by the system. So yeah, this is more or less like a cross-check system to not let the system do the entire work, but should rather work in more of a system mode. Okay. We learned the design process from designers and compared our automatically generated results with their creation through interviews and online surveys. Okay, so author essentially arranged for a user study to find out the design process to how essentially the designers think when given a product web page for creating a short video. So they have tried to incorporate those pointers when generating the system. And also for evaluation, they do an online survey and asking people to evaluate their automatically generated videos from the original one. Okay. So let's see further. So they evaluated the videos generated for 50 different web pages and the designing process involved eight designers using the output of which they essentially came out with a strategy to code their systems to what things to extract from a web page and what not to. In rest, they had 65 regular viewers for evaluating their 50 videos. So the main contributions of the paper is to basically introduce an automatic approach to generate videos from a web page based on certain constraint programming paradigm where you're trying to satisfy the temporal constraints such as the length of the video and some spatial constraints such as the aspect ratio. So while satisfying both of this with some extracted components from the web page in a sequence format to maximize the impact comes under constraint programming. Then they also talk about the method to convert hierarchical assets into a video that maintain a specific visual design. So hierarchical assets as in let's say you have a web page which you wrap under some div then you have some tabular data so you'll have one more div within this div then maybe a table tag within that you can have some image and then a text associated with that so again you can have some div tag and then img and then maybe some text so this hierarchical data that shows from a course view to a more finer view and lastly an evaluation of automatically generated videos from a web pages with professional designers and general audience okay So as a part of formative study where they asked designers to prototype a certain web page in a form of a video, they recruited six professional designers. All the participants were first evaluated based on five point Likert scale on the topic of video creation, web design and marketing. Then each of the participants was asked to do a storyboarding for 10 seconds. So storyboarding in video generation and filmmaking is a technique of blueprinting or chalking out the video contents with all of its specifics such as duration, the position of the elements, the transitioning. And this happens before the shooting or the rendering of the video starts. 
to avoid any confusions or discrepancies in the later stages. So here also all the participants were asked to do a storyboarding for a 10 second window. So this is a time constraint. They had to do for an aspect ratio of 16 is to 9 which is landscape videos and they were asked to make a non-interactive marketing video from a given page using the same assets that the page had. Okay. So after walking through a warm up task, participant had 35 minutes to complete the task. So after the tasks were completed, a team of researchers sat to analyze the results that the participants have produced. They found that the designers usually preserve the visual flow and the graphical composition from the source page. So by visual flow they mean, as you can see in this diagram, so for a page like this, you can see as you go from top to down, you move from the product name section to a bit of a details with some image attached to that. So these are the shots selected by the designers. The first was just the logo or the name of the product. The next was the message and the image attached with that. So the same flow going from top to down is maintained in the temporal fashion as well. Similarly for this website as well, the flow of going from left to right is maintained if you progress in the time sequence. So yeah, most of the time they found like the authors have preserved the visual flow. They also found that the designers provide a consistent branding appearance, colors, fonts, and all the visual elements that exist in the web page. So which means they didn't essentially change the look and feel of the original web page. They kept all of the components same while doing the storyboarding. Okay. Finally about the temporal decisions. This was one of the things that they did at the end and they had to do multiple back and forth to allocate timings for each of the frames based on the importance they would hold in the original web page. So yeah, these were the three things that researchers found out by doing the user survey. Things around temporal decision, how did they arrange their stuff, then design attributes where they found that the branding, logo, color schemes, all things were kept same and about the visual flow where they found out that the designers mostly follow the same flow that happens to be in the original web page while making the frames for their product video. Okay. So yeah, this was the user interface that I was talking about. These are the input parameters that are given by the creator. Here you can see the URL of the web page, the title of the web page, the viewport, size and the duration. So these are all the constraints and the information given to the system. So the B section is essentially what the system extracts. You can see all of these boxes which are the selected assets or the candidate assets that the system thinks should be put in the video. In the C section you can see a card like arrangement with the time duration written at the bottom which is nothing but the storyboarding where the system has automatically arranged the contents of the web page in the form of a video. So the second screen as you can see you have a text and the image which is nothing but this segment that is moved on and stacked in a vertical manner and similarly for rest of the images. Expanding on each of these would essentially give you rest of the details such as if you want to change the heading, if you want to change the position of the flowers or maybe the text and the font size. So by default all of these are same to what the original page had but again this screen gives creator the privilege to change all of these things if required. So storyboarding can also be rearranged which can be seen in this position. In the last section which is a D, you can see the entire video which is 10 seconds long and any of the changes that the user selects would be shown over here and while rendering the final video all of those changes would be incorporated and shown at this position. So yeah, this is the entire URL to videos user interface. Let's move forward. So this figure shows the end to end pipeline for URL to video. It has like four stages. The first is asset analysis, then temporal planning, visual planning, and lastly render and review. You start by giving URL to the system. It retrieves the DOM element, which are usually placed in a hierarchical manner in HTML. Using that, they extract all the necessary assets that could be headlines, images or multimedia. Then they score all of these assets that they have extracted using some methodology. We'll see to this as we move forward in the paper. So once you have the assets that are already scored, you pass it to a temporal planning stage where you're given certain constraints, let's say a 10 second window. So all of these assets have to be arranged in those 10 seconds so that the impact or the score of the sequence formed is maximized. Then you arrange all of those assets in some layout design which is usually taken off as it is how the asset appeared in the original web page. Then you stylize it essentially by adding in the same color scheme or the fonts. So this is what you do in visual planning. Lastly you send it to render and review stage 
where you render all of the components that you have selected in the previous stages and stitch them in a form of a video. And finally, when you have a video file, it goes to the user review screen that we have seen earlier, where user can override the changes that were proposed by the system. So yeah, this is the entire flow. Okay. Okay, so talking about asset extraction and scoring segment, the first step was to extract the DOM tree from the source web page. So the DOM tree looks something like this. So if this was the web page that you had, let's call it root. It will have two high level divs. The first is the background image. The second is the container that has H, P and A. So that way you can see you have those nodes that are associated with that parent. So you extract this hierarchical flow, which lets you decide and group the assets. Let's say you have total of Z nodes where you define N all is equal to N Z where Z is from all the number of nodes that you have. You define some of the major nodes such as N major that are subset of all the nodes that you had. So these nodes are based on certain high priority HTML tags such as tags H1 to H6. You have image, video, all of these tags or CSS attributes that point to the background assets that have multimedia in that. So this way you kind of prioritize the nodes. Then for every node in that high priority HTML tags, it creates an asset group GI with those nodes. Okay. So if the certain asset occupies the region above certain threshold occupancy, then you kind of club both of those nodes and call them as asset group. Also the nodes that have some overlapping component or are placed graphically adjacent to each other are clubbed to form a single asset group. Now for every asset group GI, we assign a score AI, which is prioritized based on HTML tags. As we saw like H1 to S6, image tag, video tags, all of these are given high priority. If the element exists in the top of the page, that also is given little high priority compared to the elements that exist in the bottom of the page. Then the region size, how much area does that occupy on the entire web page? So which means the larger presence on the entire web page at the beginning of the page is given the highest score. So yeah, this was some of the rule based scoring scheme that the authors proposed for scoring every asset from the web page. Okay. Talking about constraint based temporal planning that organizes the assets sequentially adhering to some temporal constraint while making the video. So we define certain variables over which the constraints will be applied. So let's call each of the asset group GI that belongs to a superset capital G and the variable D is assigned to each of these GIs representing the duration time it will be present in the output video and let L be the user specified video length. So the first constraint is that the length of individual clips which is D has to sum to L when summed over all the clips that have to be there in the video. So this kind of represents that we are presenting a sequential order of all the clips that we have without any temporal gap or overlap in the video timeline. So that is the first constraint. Talking about the second constraint, any asset group GI can be excluded from the video if D is set to zero. Talking about the third constraint, here you define D min, which is less than or equal to capital D and is greater than zero representing the minimum duration for which this asset group should be shown in the video, considering it to be enough time for viewers to read the entire content. So yeah, that is constraint number three. Talking about the fourth constraint, to ensure that the video is dynamic enough, a video should contain multiple asset groups. So the duration of every asset group should not exceed the Dmax level as well. And lastly, any additions from the user side based on user review should be incorporated so that's why D should be greater than zero for those assets. So under all these constraints, you try to maximize this equation that considers the duration and the score for every asset group for all the M assets that you want to arrange sequentially to form that video. So yeah, this was the objective function. Moving forward. For graphical layout, they have certain fixed templates such as side by side or full image with the full heading or full image with the heading on one side. So these are a couple of templates that they use to incorporate the text and the multimedia segments. For stylization, the choice of font, size and weight are based on the source page from which we are trying to extract the video. They do define minimum and maximum font size for readability and visual balance. Okay. And similarly for time adjustments, you apply the CSP optimization. For animations, they do a word by word animation if the text is short or maybe phrase by phrase animation if you have a longer title. So yeah, then you have implementation and results. So I believe we are done with the paper now. So it was quite an interesting read to see how machine learning can be used for video generation from 
purely text content such as internet web pages. It would be interesting to see how this thing would scale if you do not have any hierarchical DOM like structure and if some just text file is given as an input to the model. So yeah, that is one of the food for thought. Having said that, if you like such content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and do share it with your friends whosoever is interested in such content. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye.